It's not a mirrored acrylic. It's metallic acrylic. Today on Laser Nug. Season's pretty much over for me. And it wasn't a bad season. Not as busy as I'd like, but a little better than last year. Got a few things left and a couple of things to do for the family and otherwise I'm done. But I wanted to share this with you because for those of you that have followed the channel, you'll know that after a little while of getting used to using the laser, I started realizing I could use kind of a mirrored acrylic and blend it with different types of woods or different other materials to get a nicer effect on things like ornaments or decorations or signs or those kind of things. Mirrored acrylic is pretty cool stuff. However, I stumbled upon this stuff called metallic acrylic. It's two-sided, just like most acrylics, but instead of being mirrored, it has, well, a metallic finish to it, and it gives that color a little more depth or richness. It's a very unique kind of product. This one is from Houston Acrylics, so I guess it's made or it's, it's distributed from the US, but I get it from KJP Hardwoods up here in Ottawa, and I figured I'd give it a shot. So I, I ordered a couple of sheets of it, and it's actually pretty cool stuff because not only does it have a beautiful acrylic finish, but you can also get a white engraving from it. And I'm gonna show you that today. If you started trying or playing around with acrylics, you'll know that most colored acrylics, almost all of them, you can't actually get an engraved color off of it, so to speak. You can off of black with the right settings, you can get kind of a grayish white. And on other acrylics, if you've got a mirrored acrylic, of course, you can engrave the back so you can see through the mirror. But generally speaking, your colors, especially your pastel colors, you're not gonna get a colored engrave. You can engrave it, you just won't see it because it'll be blended kind of into the color of the acrylic. This stuff here though, with the right settings, you can get a nice white engrave from it. So today we're gonna use my bolt, just for demonstration purposes. And I also wanted to talk about one other thing, especially if you're a beginner and you're new to lasers. I'm actually going to peel the protective sheet off both sides today. Usually whenever I'm using acrylics, the side that I'm going to face down on my honeycomb, I always leave the protective film on, but I want to show you something today. Let's fire it up. So I'm just going to grab this ornament file just so I can test, I can show you how it engraves and how it cuts in the bolt. I've worked with the red, the blue, and the green so far. You have to change or slightly change your power settings depending on what, I guess, depth of white engrave you want to get from the metallic acrylic. So I'll give you my settings here before we go any further. So I know some of you would like them. My fill settings are going to be 800 at 20 and 20, no air assist, fill mode, 604 lines per inch, one pass. And my cut settings for this metallic are similar to my other ones. Uh, for other acrylics, it's 12, 85, and 85 with one pass, full air, line mode. So I've got the material in the bolt. I'm just gonna highlight this, I'm gonna check it, make sure everything looks good. It does, I'm in good shape. I have my fill before my line, which is important. And you'll see here I'm disconnected. And that's because I turned the bolt on after I opened light burn. So light burn is not looking for the laser. So I'm gonna ask it to look for the laser by right clicking the devices button. And if you take a look, you'll see it spins and I should be ready. There we go. So I have it highlighted. I have my user origin in the top left, which is where I like to have it. I'm on my bolt, let's send the file. I've checked my files at the bolt. I'm gonna autofocus. I'm gonna set my origin, and I'm gonna frame my job, make sure it's in the right spot. I think that looks pretty good. Okay, and we're good to go. For those that are interested, I'm using a 1.5 inch lens on the bolt today. Do you know one of the things I really love about my bolt? Can you hear that? That's right, it's so quiet in my shop. For reference, you'll notice I did not mask the acrylic. I didn't use any Dawn dish soap. I've done nothing to it. I put the acrylic in there raw, and you'll see just how clean that bolt is engraving this metallic acrylic. 
While that job is running in the background, I wanted to reach out and offer a recommendation to you folks that are beginner laser users. I know in the last month or so, I've talked to seven or eight of you. Uh, congrats on the new laser. I think all of you but two, it's your very first laser and your first time using Lightburn. And there's a number of steps that you kind of have to build into muscle memory. So I want to show you what my exact steps are every time I run a job. And I'll show you what I did for the first while as well. Let's jump into Lightburn. I have kind of a 10 point checklist. And here's what I do in the same order every time until I build muscle memory or until I built muscle memory. Let's assume this is our finished design because it is. I'm going to grab that design. The first thing I'm going to do before I'm ready to send it to the laser, I'm going to do these steps. I'm going to grab that design. I'm going to come up here. I'm going to make sure it's grouped. If, for example, it wasn't grouped, I just ungrouped it. I grab it. And if it's not grouped, I'm going to group it. Moreover, quite often, you're going to send multiple pieces. So let's say I'm going to send these two to the bolt because I want them to cut on the same sheet at the same time. I always group it. You don't have to group it. Once you've selected it, you can now send the file, but I always group it because I, at some point, always end up clicking around somewhere else in the file, and then I come back to it, grab it, and if I haven't grouped it all, there's been many times where I've missed pieces, sent it to the Bolt or to the Nova Plus, and then found out when the job was done that I was missing elements or layers. I group it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here. I always preview my job. I want to make sure that everything I expect to be there is there. And more importantly, I want to make sure that what's supposed to be an engrave is an engrave and what's supposed to be a cut is a cut. I'm good. I can also check the rough time that it's going to take to run the job. The third thing I do is I check the order of my layers. You'll see here I always have my fill layers before my line or my cut layers or score layers. And that's because you generally... 99% of the time you don't want to cut the piece out and then try to engrave it because quite often when that piece cuts it's going to shift or move because it's going to fall down onto the honeycomb a little bit deeper than the, the original material and now you're going to be trying to engrave on something that's not flat. So if you find for example that my fill layer is in the wrong spot and I have my cut layer here I'm just going to grab that fill layer and I'm going to move it so that it happens first before my cut. Because you'll see here I'm using a black and a red layer. I want to make sure that fill is there and then the line comes afterwards. I've confirmed that. Everything's good. The next thing I do is I check user origin. If you're brand new to lasers, you'll notice there are three options here. You've got user origin, absolute origin, or current position. I'd recommend that until you get more experience on the laser, always use user origin. You'll see here I always keep mine in the top left corner. And that's, of course, this little green dot here. I can move it to, the, to any other corner, but I always like to reference the top left. It's just more comfortable for me. So I've grouped it. I've checked my layers to make sure they're in the right order. I've previewed it. I've, got, I've checked to make sure I'm on user origin. And now I'm going to send the file. If you're running a bolt, you're going to hear a beep that confirms that the file has been transferred from Lightburn to the bolt. For some reason, my Nova Plus doesn't beep. You just have to pull up the file and see if it's there. I'm going to make sure that my picture shows up here in the window. If for some reason you see something that says image not available or image not loaded, go back and resend the file back to the bolt. It'll beep again. Once you see that the picture's here, you know the file is there. I'm going to grab my material, I'm going to place it into my bed. I'm going to make sure it's flat. I'm going to run my laser head out onto the material. I'm going to press autofocus. When that's done, I'm going to move the laser head to where I want the job to cut. I'm going to press origin. I'm going to frame that job to make sure it has the room and it's in the right spot on the material. And then we press start. What I found helpful in the early days, I just grabbed a sticky note and I wrote those 10 steps on that sticky note and I stuck it on the top of my bolt. After about the first dozen, two dozen jobs that you run, you follow that list in the exact order every time and it builds muscle memory and pretty soon you just automatically run those steps every time. That way you don't end up setting partial jobs, you don't end up cutting before you fill, you don't accidentally send it with an absolute coordinate when it should have been user origin. All of these steps are pretty quick as you see 
And having just a little reminder for those first, you know, dozen jobs helps you to build that memory to know every step every time. And it just minimizes wastes or time. And it's just going to minimize some frustration. I hope you find that helpful. So it's all wrapped up. It was a six minute job from start to finish. But before I pull it out of the laser and show it to you, I wanted to talk about a few things to do with acrylics. And by all means, I'm not an expert, but I've had this machine now for 25 months. I do a lot of acrylic work, both on this and my Nova Plus. And a couple of things that you'll see on YouTube or that you believe to be true that work for some folks, including myself, may or may not work for you or you may or may not want to do. And when it comes to acrylics, you'll see a number of YouTube videos from content creators suggesting that whenever you're putting anything into your Bolt or your Nova Plus, you've got to use lay flat pins or low profile magnets to hold your material in place, acrylic, plywoods or otherwise. But as you've noticed, I didn't put anything in here and I didn't use any lay flat pins or magnets. I virtually never ever use lay flat pins, magnets or anything else to hold my material down in either laser because the material never moves. The lasers are pretty sturdy and they're pretty heavily built. So they're pretty sturdy when that thing's running at a thousand millimeters a second. And I've never once had material that's moved during the operation. However, if I've got things like craft plywood, plywoods, uh, leatherette, anything that I think might have a bit of a warp or a crown to it, or might be a loose type material like leatherette, I'll always hold it down. And the reason or the purpose for that is, is because you need to maintain a flat surface so that your autofocus or your focal length remains consistent through and across the whole piece. But I honestly never, not to this date, have I ever used these because I was concerned that my piece or my material was going to shift somehow during engraving or cutting. It's never happened. However, by all means, if you feel more comfortable, grab some lay flat pins uh, from Thunder Laser or off of Etsy or wherever you can find them. Get some magnets, low profile of course, less than six millimeters in thickness, and hold your piece down if that provides kind of the confidence that you think you should have to make sure it doesn't move. And certainly if you're using any type of wood product or anything that's could possibly be warped or crowned, you definitely have to hold it down to get it flat. Second thing I wanted to show you, you'll notice I laid my acrylic right on the honeycomb. I haven't used any risers or any standoffs to lift it off the bed, right? I've engraved it and cut it flat on the honeycomb. In fact, I have never once raised my material off the honeycomb, whether it's plywood, leatherette, acrylics, anything I've used, true flat, I always cut it on the honeycomb. Granted, the Nova Plus has a blade table and I use that sometimes, but generally speaking, I always cut my materials on the honeycomb. And I think generally what you'll see in those videos or from those content creators is the concern about flashback or burning on the bottom side of your material. I have honestly never experienced that on acrylic. I do from time to time on plywoods, but then again, I'm sanding whatever I've engraved anyway, so I just flip the piece over and sand off the flashback marks or the burn marks or scorch marks. However, with acrylic, I don't think there's a need to do it. It's not a bad idea to do it if you choose to. However, I wanted to show you, and I haven't looked at this yet. Here's my piece. And that's right out of the laser. And for the purposes of demonstration, I took the plastic protective film off the back. Once again, I don't get flashback. So perhaps the folks that are experiencing flashback may have a different type of laser, a different quality of laser. They may be in a position where the settings that they've created for cutting the acrylic are too strong and it's causing excessive flashback. I'm not sure. But just so you're aware, you can certainly get risers and lift your material if you choose to, just with the understanding that you still need to make sure that that material lays flat and is not crowned or warped in any way because it's going to throw off your focal length and it's going to cause your engraver, your cut to be impaired. Just my experience. I hope that's helpful for you folks. Let's clean this up and take a look at it. You'd almost think there's nothing to clean off of that right out of the laser, but you can see there is a little dust there. I'm going to use my acrylic cleaner and always a microfiber cloth on acrylics. Give her a little squirt. That's all it takes and then gentle wipes so you don't scratch or mar the surface. 
I'm even going to clean the back since I took the film off it already. And there we go. And that's your metallic finish. So that's the near finished product there. You'll see I used some true flat to put the ring around the ornament as well as for the, the lettering in the center. And I think it turned out really nice. Plus I love the fact that it's two sided, especially if you're in an environment where you've got a lot of lights or you want some form of reflection. The other thing I noticed about this metallic acrylic versus the mirrored is that it's a much more subtle reflection and the metallic component of this acrylic gives the color a nice, deep, rich color. I wanted to also show you this sign I did for a local business. I'll put it here on the screen. This was the metallic blue acrylic that I picked up. And again, you can see if I'd used a blue mirrored acrylic, there would be much more reflection. I mean, it's a mirror. But more importantly now, I've got a gentle reflection, but I think the metallic nature of it gives depth to the color and it just makes it much look much more rich and full in the background of that sign and just for reference that's not the engraved that you see on there i've actually used a different type of acrylic for the lettering and the logo so hey i hope you found it helpful today it's just another type of material that you can use whether it's in your nova plus or your bolt engraves cuts cleanly and it'll add a different dimension or make your designs or your creations a little different than others because you've added a different dimension or a different type of material into whatever it is you're building. Thanks so much for sticking around today. I hope it was helpful. Happy holidays to everybody. Please be kind. And I'll see you again right here. I'm Gord Potter, and you've been watching Laser Nug. Cheers.